So congratulations. You've just gotten married. Now you want to bring that individual to the States. You want to show them what the U.S. is about. And you are an American person. Your spouse, husband or wife, is not. And you'd like to know, well, how can I get them here? How can I bring them here? How can I get them their green card? So effectively, that's an I-130 application. So the I-130 is a petition for alien resident, uh, alien relative, excuse me. And the fee for that is $535. And some of the things that are needed for that are as followed. So in filing the I-130, you also need to take care to have the evidence. So such as like the wedding photo, the reception photo, something like that, maybe a photo with the parents-in-law, something like that. Also, perhaps a health insurance, if you have health insurance with this individual, maybe some emails, correspondence, or anything like that. Maybe some, some letters, if you will, something like this, emails back and forth. Basically, what you're trying to do is it's called an RFE, Request for Evidence. And you're trying to establish a, a case that you know this individual and you married them because you want to marry them, not because of other reasons. So let's get to the form itself. So the form itself is a form I-130 USCIS. So if you go to USCIS.gov and you find the form I-130, so let's look at it a little quick. This form was updated, I believe it was, so that was February of 2019. That's the last time it was updated. Then the part one, you're going to fill out, this is you. So part one is relationship. So you are the petitioner. Your relative is the beneficiary of the relationship. And it's you are the spouse. You are the one who is American. And you're saying, hey, I am filling out this petition for my spouse. And if you have, say, uh, a number four, did you gain lawful permanent resident status or citizenship through adoption? No. And that's what you're going to fill out for that because you're an American citizen. Scroll down a little bit. Part two. So this is about you. Now, if you are a American citizen, you don't have to put this down because you're, you're not needed with the alien residency number and the UCIS online account number. But since you're American, you're going to put the Social Security number down here. You're going to put your full name. In this case, it's uh, Marsha Brady is the individual's name. So this is a girl who's filling for their husband, who is in Argentina, who is Ricky Bobby. And we're going to go to part two. So part two is more information about the person you're bringing to the States. Other names used in this case is not. Other information. So this is Marsha, where Marsha lives. She lives in Dallas, Texas. She's a female. Her mailing address, she lives at 118T Way in Dallas, Texas, United States of America. So here's kind of an interesting one. Is your current mailing address the same as your physical? And yes, that's the case. If it is not the case, then you would put no, and then you'd put physical address history. So you might put another address. So you want to go back for five years. So that's what you want to uh, have in the past five years. Where have you lived in the past five years prior to submitting the I-130? I they want to know that. Down here on 13A, since we already put just a mailing address, we're going to put when we first lived in that residence in Dallas, Texas, till the present. Go down a little more. The marriage status. Since we... Marsha Brady is married to Ricky Bobby. You're going to say how many times you've been married? One. Current marital status is married. Marsha's married. And down here, when were they married? Where was the place of marriage? In this case, Marsha went down to Argentina. She married an uh, individual on there, Ricky Bobby, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. So the name of the spouse, if any, so spouse one, this is just this one spouse because she's only married one person. Ricky Bobby is the name. Date of marriage has not ended, so we're going to leave that blank. 
information about uh, Marsha's parents. It's, again, we're still on the person petitioning. Pa parent number one, which is Mike Brady, and Mike Brady's date of birth and is who he uh, male. Over here, we're going to go in his country of birth. He was born in Dallas. The country residence, America. Parent number two, this is the, the mom. So this is uh, Kara Brady, and she was born on that day. A female, where does she live? Her place of residence. Information about you yourself, the petitioner, meaning you are the one petitioning, right? You're going to state who you are. Oh, I am a U.S. citizen, born in the United States. Have you ever obtained naturalization or a certificate of citizenship? So if you were like, say, you were naturalized, you would put yes here. But we're going to leave it blank because you were born in the States. Okay. And if we answered yes to item number 38, we would put our certificate number, our place of issuance, and the date we got our naturalization certificate. Employment history. So this is, again, Marsha. Where has Marsha worked at? Marsha works for Dell currently in Round Rock, Texas, which is kind of a drive. What does she do? She's a technical support technician. What country is it in America? When did she start? She started on 2017 until present. If she had more than one job, you would come over here to part two, and you'd put another employee. And typically what happens is you want to do the past five years for employment as well. Now, part three. So who is she? She's non-Hispanic. She's white. He's five foot nine, 120 pounds. She has uh, blue blue eyes, blonde hair. And so now we're into the petition. So the information about the beneficiary. So this is her husband, Ricky Bobby. And she's going to put information about him now here. So if he had a social security number, say he was here on um, work visa, something like that, he would get a social security number or um, UCIS or alien registration number, a, a number they call it, she would put that. But since he hasn't, he's never been in America, we're just going to scroll down and put his name. So he's Ricky Bobby, Ricky A. Bobby. He's not used any other name. Where, where is he born? He was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. He's a male. And has anyone ever else filed for the petition? And the answer is no, meaning nobody else has filed he hasn't been married before, or one of his relatives hasn't filed for him to be a beneficiary. Going over here, so about his physical address, where does he live? Where does Ricky Bobby live? Ricky Bobby lives on the coast in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, and going to other contacts. So this is other address and contact information. This is the address where Ricky Bobby is going to live with his wife. So they're going to live at 118T Way in Dallas, Texas. And the phone number there in Texas, so this is Marsha's, obviously this is Marsha's address, right? She's going to put that down. And Ricky Bobby's information, so Ricky Bobby's mobile telephone number and Ricky Bobby's um, address, okay? So now this still in Ricky Bobby here. Beneficiary. So this is Ricky Bobby. So... Ricky Bobby has been married once, which is Marsha Brady, and married. Date of marriage should be the same. Should match the same because it does. Where did they get married? Well, they got married in a church in Buenos Aires, Providence of Buenos Aires. So here is the name of spouse. This is Ricky Bobby's spouse, which is Marsha Brady. You're going to put Marsha Brady. And marriage didn't end, so we're not going to put that. If it did, we'd put more than one spouse. Information about Ricky Bobby's relatives is provide information about the beneficiary's spouse and children. So in here, we've chosen to put the parents down. So Ricky Bobby, his dad is John Bobby. And when John was born, what's his citizenship, country of birth? And we've chosen to put his mother down. If he had kids, you'd put those down here as well. In this case, the mom is Susan Bobby. 
So we put that down here, country of birth. And we're going to scroll down a little bit here. More information, so if we had more than one kid, want more, several children, you put that, five, six kids or whatever. Beneficiary entry information. So here's kind of an interesting one. Has the beneficiary, meaning Ricky Bobby, ever been to the States? The answer is no. We're going to put no there. If he had, you'd put that information down, and you'd put down when did he arrive, and what under what circumstances was he worker, was he traveling business, visitor, visit visa, whatever. When did he arrive? What was his departure record number? Okay. He has a passport already, obviously, right? We put that down here in number 47, which is, they use that, they're going to need that, obviously, anyway, right? So it's beneficial to put that down. And one would recommend that they get a passport prior to doing this because that's a, a way to identify the person in the other country, who they are, all those, that's information right there. Going over here, you have 48. Again, we're on the passport still, country of insurance, which is Argentina, and when does it expire? So the, now we're into Ricky Bobby's work. Where does he work in the past five years? So we're talking about, and even if they're employed outside of the States, where have they uh, worked? If they've been unemployed, been unemployed. In this case, Ricky Bobby worked at a casino. It's called Caso Gozada, Gozada, and it's in Buenos Aires, right on the ocean, actually, there, right on the ocean there, right near the ocean at the bay. How long has he worked there? Information. So, additional information about the beneficial. Ricky Bobby, has he ever had any other immigration proceedings? So, meaning like, Someone else has petitioned him. He needs to go on for petition. In this case, it's no. We're going to click, select no there. And if you select yes, you'd put down the appropriate answers. So for part number four here, if the beneficiary native of written language does not use Roman numeral letters, so for instance, say they're Arabic, right? Or they're... South African or some different language like that, that the like Russian is, for example, uh, has uh, interesting or different characters. You put that, you put that information down here. So that you're meaning you're putting it in their uh, tongue or their native language, if you will. Type in his or her name and a foreign address in their native written language. You'd put that down. You'd like write it in. Okay. And in this case, we're filing for the spouse, provide an address which your physical live together. So in this case, Ricky Bobby and Marsha Brady have never lived together. So we're going to put never lived together on that one. But if they have, they'd put where they've lived. Maybe, they, you know, if they've lived somewhere where they haven't. So now we're going over to, we're almost done actually, right? This is a pretty quick one actually. Right? So now we're on page page 9 of 12, you want to put the petitioner's contact information. So this would mean this is Marsha Brady. We're going to put the petition, we're going to put her daytime phone number, her mobile phone number, and her email address. Okay. Now, here's an important right here, right? So the petitioner, she's Marsha Brady. She filled it out herself, everything, all the information, right? So she wants to put down... I can read English. I can understand English. All that. No one, no one translated for me. I did it all on my own. Good to go. Good to go. And then Marsha signs it and puts a date. And then down here, if you had an interpreter, which we didn't, the interpreter would put down that information. Say, for instance, they they're Russian and they speak. They don't speak English. Well, they would use an interpreter. An interpreter put this information down here. The interpreter's mailing address. The signature, all the information there. It could be even a relative, actually. It could be a relative who interprets it. That's that's uh, suitable as well. You know, as long as that person would just fill information out and sign it, that would be what it, what it's for. And if they were a, they prepared it. You know, for instance, if you had an attorney, you put the attorney here. I'm an attorney, but in this case, it's not. Marsha's doing her own. 
So there's, you know, Marsh is doing everything. Now, now if there was, if Ricky Bobby had a lot of kids, or Marsha or Brady had a lot of kids, or whatever, more information, she could put that information down here, or he could put that information down here, meaning you had extra space, you didn't have enough space for all the kids you have, or relatives you have, you put those individuals down here, and then you have plenty of space here to put down. And that's pretty much it. So the thing, it takes a probably about an hour to get the information ready for a I-130, and then prepare it, and then send it off. Now, when you send it off, it usually is going to take a couple weeks to get back a notice or some information about, okay, hey, we have your your I-130 on file. You, we, you know, we're processing it or whatever, and then they send you a, a number. Almost they give you a number, and then you can go online and check that number. And then you can find out, well, it's in the process, or it's processing, or you're waiting, or whatever, right? So the process, usually how here's how it works, right? You have Marsha Brady sends it out. Sends out the paperwork, the I-130, all that stuff done, right? Okay, done. Then usually what happens is Ricky Bobby is going to have to do a medical in Argentina before going to for the interview. You still have the interview interview. He's gonna do medical in Argentina. He's gonna to go to a doctor to like a an exam, if you will, right, or whatever. It's not really an exam exam. It's just more like a they talk to you and, and gauge who you are and um recommend things like that. Maybe they take the vaccination. Some of them take vaccinations like Hep A, Hep B, something like that, right? Usually, um, and then, then after that's done, meaning that the the American or the UCIS basically, or the American consul, if you will, or the powers that be, what they'll do is they'll send send that information to the country, the consulate there in Argentina, and then from there they'll send it that information to the doctor, like what they need, right? And the doctor will schedule an appointment for Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby goes there, does his exam, gets the vaccinations or whatever he needs, and then goes to the interview. So Ricky Bobby, will, I'll bring, he'll bring then the request for evidence. He'll have those pictures of him getting married, in this case, is... Some, maybe some emails that he's had, correspondences and whatever with him, text messages, if he can print those out, pictures, like I said, with him when he goes for the interview. And when he's in the interview, it usually takes about a half hour or something like that. After the interview is done, then what they'll do is they'll call him back in. They'll say, we approve it or they don't approve it. Usually they approve it, but it can, can be different. But usually they approve it because it's coming from the state, so a lot of times they've already vetted it. They've already processed it there, and it's just a formality. Then what usually happens is Ricky Bobby will go home, and he'll get a he'll leave his passport there at the consulate, the American consulate. He'll go home about seven or eight days later. He'll come back in, and he'll have his passport with the visa on it, all right, ready to go. And then it'll be a... Uh, a visa good for a short amount of time, and then he gets to the states. When now when he comes to the states, then he gets the green card when he comes to the states. And that'll usually arrive in the mail. Now that'll arrive at Marsha Brady's house on in Dallas. It'll arrive there about two weeks after he gets in the states, and then from there, it's recommended to go to the Social Security office and get a Social Security number, and then start your process. And usually, three four years later, you can apply to be a citizenship. So. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this I-130 Petition for Alien Resident video. Have a great day.